series of videos we're going to look at fixed income investing and we're going to look at various classes of fixed income and give you some advice and general guidance as well as a basic explanation of what these things are and how they work. So just introduce key concepts. So by fixed income what do I actually mean by fixed? You can probably guess. Uh, you buy stuff and you get a fixed amount of cash every year. It's not completely fixed. Some certain factors can move it, but it's pretty dependable. For example, if we look at Aviva, you've got 8.75% preference share. This is a fixed income security. So for every one of these that you buy, you should get 8.75 pence paid to you each year. Uh, whereas if you owned a normal share in Aviva, that stock could go up or down. There's advantages and disadvantages to this. Uh, when you buy the fixed income, you're not going to get any more money if the company gets bigger or is more successful, but you're insulated from bad years because your amount of um, dividend is fixed. So the various types of fixed income that we're going to look at is bonds, which are just loans to companies, um, government bonds, that's are uh, loans to governments. The UK, they're usually called gilts. The US, they talk about treasuries or T-bills. Um, we're going to look at exchange-traded funds, which are uh, funds that are listed on stock exchanges, which allow you to buy hundreds or even thousands of bonds packaged together into a fund. So very, very efficient ways of investing in fixed income. I look at preference shares, which are kind of an intermediate between um, bonds, so pure debt, and equity in a company. Um, there's convertibles, which are a bit more advanced. That's where you get a bond that can be converted into stock under certain conditions, but pays uh, interest like a normal bond. And we're going to look at perpetual interest-bearing shares, um, often called PIBs, which are issued by building societies. Um, so you probably want to know how you can actually invest in these things. You just go through a stockbroker as usual. You pay the commissions and it will appear in your account. Um, some of these bonds come with minimums. You may have to buy a 1,000. You may have to buy 50,000. This is when they're first issued but when they're trading they can usually be traded in multiples of about £100 or for preference shares as low as a pound. Um, you want to think about diversification so you probably if you don't have a monstrously big portfolio you'll be looking at index funds or exchange traded funds otherwise you're not going to be diversified. And Most people invest through the bond funds rather than an exchange traded fund or index fund for example, you've got the Fidelity Money Builder. I don't like these. I think the fees are far too high and you don't get much more than an ETF or in fact anything more. So you're better with ETFs, but you'll, you'll see that later. I'll have a full explanation. So why do you want fixed income? It's fixed and it's a good source of income. So since the level of income is agreed in advance, it should remain constant. So if you're depending on this income, you would quite like a constant income. You don't want some years it to plummet and other years to be in huge excess, uh, which is probably people who are retiring that are going to find this most useful because it will boost the yield on your retirement investments. You can put in a lot of these fixed income along with perhaps the uh, stocks that you own and this will increase the overall income that it will generate while your stocks should keep pace with inflation. Um, and these are far better than annuities. A lot of annuities providers when they actually sell you an annuity they take your money and put it in a lot of fixed income investments that yield more than they're actually paying out in an annuity. Um, and I think definitely it should be a consideration in any portfolio. All ages should hold some fi fixed income. The older you are, the more fixed income you want to hold. 
but even when you're young, you still need a degree of fixed income because the, there's a, a correlation between stocks and bonds. Usually, when uh, bonds go up, stocks go down. Bonds go up, uh, stocks go down. So there's that inverse relationship. It's not a hundred percent perfect. So that's an important consideration. It helps with diversification holding equities and bonds. Because over the last five years through the financial crash, uh, people who held a portfolio of stocks and bonds have done all right. People who just held stocks, they were the ones hit hardest. And one of the easiest ways to get the correct balance of stocks and bonds for your age group is to look at lifestyle funds. Vanguard's launched a whole load of these in, in, in the UK. They're well worth a look. So that concludes the very brief introduction. And in next videos we're going to look at each of these investments in turn and try and understand what they are and how they can fit in and work in your portfolio.